Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video So in this video we're gonna create a Vulkan application from scratch So let's get started, of course using the C language, not C++ But yeah, so we have C executable here, language standard We're gonna be using CMake for the build system And then language standard C17 I'm calling my project Kodotaku Vulkan Tutorial So let's create the project And you notice that my IDE have generated for me a CMake list and main.c I'm just gonna make sure to create a directory called src here. Oh my god, not sr, but src. There we go, refactor. I'm gonna put my main.c right there inside of it. That's the only change I'm gonna do. And now you notice that my uh, IDE have generated the CMake list.txt in the root directory. Um, it's uh, selecting a CMake minimum required, so if anyone doesn't have this version, at least uh, they're gonna get an error. All right, um, project here we're actually declaring our project. We're calling it Code Attack of Vulkan Tutorial, and we're declaring that this project is using the language C. Then we're setting a variable called CMake C standard to 17, which so we can use CMake uh, 17 basically. And then we're adding an executable, so basically it will build build an executable. And here we're specifying the project that we want to to build. And after that, we're specifying the source files. In this case, it's just src slash main.c because we have one file. All right, so that's pretty much it. Now, if we actually run this, we're going to get hello world. Lovely. Now, in fact, after this, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to target link libraries. There you go. I'm going to actually just copy my project name and put it there as the first argument. Second arguments, like the, the other arguments, will be just the, the the libraries that I want to link. In this case, it's GFW and Vulkan. This is the only libraries that I need for now. Let's uh, enable authority load. Why not? Main.c and there you go. Uh, now, this should hopefully link and everything. And by the way, to be able to use it like this, you should have uh, GFW and Vulkan installed in your system, okay? And if you want to install the the needed stuff for for um, you know for Vulkan, okay, and for GFW, just make sure to to watch, like not to watch, to read some tutorial or to watch another tutorial. I'm not gonna go through the setup because there's a lot of things depending on if you are a Mac OS, Linux, or stuff like that. Linux, it's really straightforward. You just go ahead, you use your package manager, you install GFW, Vulkan, and some stuff. And that's pretty much it, really. So anyway, now I'm going to start by actually going ahead and, and create, including um, Vulkan. So you should include Vulkan first. Uh, include, uh, you should also include GFW. Oh my god, GFW, there we go. Uh, slash GFW3.h, there we go. Now, this, this, um, this will change depending on your on your how you installed your library. So you may have just this. You may need just this gfw3.h. It really depends on how you set up your project. Okay, but uh, for me as Linux, I installed it using your package my package manager. I have to do it like this. All right, so nice, lovely. And of course, make sure that the order is right. Lovely. Now I need a. I'm gonna create a macro that will make our lives much easier while. Uh, you know, uh, printing errors. So I'm going to call it uh, panic. And it basically takes in an error, a format, and and uh, a lot of other arguments, OK? All right, lovely. Now, what's going to happen here is that we're going to have if error, OK? We're going to have some, we're going to do some stuff. Um, first of all, I'm going to use fprintf instead of printf because I want to use a uh, specific stream, which is the standard error stream. It's called SCD error. And after that, I need to specify the format. Here's, I'm just gonna choose this. Uh, I'm gonna show you why in a second, but yeah. I'm gonna do it like this. I never seen someone make it like this, but it's so beautiful. Like It's just so, so useful. All right, anyway. Um, all right, so here basically I'm gonna have the, this, the file name and then the function name and then I'm gonna have the line number and then I'm gonna basically have error and then basically here I'm gonna have the error code that we got that leaded to the error nice uh, all right now that's pretty much it and afterwards we're just gonna say 
format here, which is this argument. Now the thing is, when you say something like this, right? So you have two strings in in C, for example. <laughs> Let's see how that's gonna go. As you can see, it just concatenate them at compile time, which is lovely. And that's essentially what we're doing here. We're just taking this string, this string that is predefined, and we're concatenating it with the format parameter. All right, lovely. Now that's for print. I'm gonna see comma, and now I need to give it the parameters that I need for this format. Okay, so for the first one, I need the file name, and the file name, if I remember well, it's something like this. Let me make sure. File actually, I need a. I need this guy right here. There we go. That's for the file name. By the way, this these macros may change depending on your compiler but they're probably there for you, but anyway. And afterwards, I'm gonna use another macro called function uh, for the second one. And the third one, I'm gonna use another mac, actually, yeah, another macro called line, which is gonna give me the line number. By the way, this function macro will give me the function name at compile time, of course, which is interesting. And that's pretty much it. Uh, okay, actually, and the last one, which is gonna be here, we're gonna actually give it the error that lead to this because in fact, uh, error, if it's zero, then basically it won't error, it won't panic, this whole thing will be ignored. But if error is anything other than zero, then well, it's gonna actually go ahead and print the error and do stuff like that, right? So here we're just gonna say which error code have happened basically in here. Lovely. And after that, in fact, uh, just for the sake of decoration, I'm just gonna add a new line, add a tab, and then basically we got the new, the other format, lovely. And then I'm just gonna say, I'm gonna put the VA args. And VA args will be replaced with all the parameters that you give afterwards, basically. And we're using VA args because they could be, they could be one argument, two arguments, three arguments, we don't know. That's why we're using VA args. Uh, and we're using this these three guys right here. So lovely. Okay. Error VA args. Lovely stuff. And then afterwards I would like to exit the program. Or in fact, instead of exit, we can also uh, uh, send a signal. Uh, let's see. So the thing is if we include signal.h I don't really remember well, but hmm. trap no. Let's see which signal we can send. Maybe this. There is kill here. There is raise. Probably raise. Yeah, raise. Let's go. Okay. So I'm gonna use raise. Sig. Uh, I'm gonna use SIG ABRT. This signal could change depending on which platform, but I'm just gonna go with this for now, okay? So yeah, after basically printing the error, we're just gonna raise SIG ABRT, ABRT which basically will go ahead and exit the program if you are on release mode. Otherwise, it will actually uh, invoke the debugger, hopefully. And we're gonna try it. We're gonna try it. And of course, to use arrays right here, you have to to include signal dot h. Awesome. All right. Awesome stuff. Include Vulcan GFW. So we have that. Now let's actually try to use panic instead of print. Let's try to use panic. So if panic, if it's zero, and let's see, we have some format. Hello world. Okay. And by the way, don't need the semicolon. Why? Uh, because we have a block here, okay? And in fact, it's just a good uh, a good practice to always, uh, you know, like wrap your your macros in in this or in parentheses, just to make sure it doesn't mix up with other source code. But yeah, you could actually add the semicolon, or you could not. The, it's a preference. All right. So anyway, panic here. So what's the problem here? Now the, the thing is you have to pass some arguments. So for example, hello world, I don't know, I, one, two, three. Okay, and let's try this up. 
All right, so it didn't do anything because in fact, zero, it's zero. But if you have anything other than zero, as you can see, it panics. It told me that it's the source file. It's called main.c. The function is called main, and the line number is 10, as you can see here, and the error, and it told me which error code, because in fact, if you have some another error code, then it's also gonna tell me what error code have caused that. And then we have hello world123. This is basically like just like a normal printf at the end of the day, okay? But we're using std error because in fact, if we don't use std error, uh, this will go to, uh, we can go to std out. Like if you just use printf, it's gonna go to std out and it will look like this, which is not the best ever. Uh, it's not the best looking. So for example, my IDE actually goes ahead and color red everything that is uh, inside the std error, which is awesome, lovely. I think it's so cool. All right, so, and as you can see, it's finished, interrupted by signal, sig abrt, lovely. And in fact, if I use the debug mode, it's actually gonna go ahead and interrupt right there with the signal, as you can see, which is awesome, just perfect. All right, lovely. And uh, now the, the problem that I have with this macro that we still have in this macro is that you cannot actually give it zero arguments after the format which is not always what you need. As you can see here, it's going to error. But how to fix that, there is a way to fix that, although it may not be cross-platform, but at least for GCC, you can go ahead into VA, VA args and you can include this two hashtags before it, and it will actually go ahead and now VA args will be optional, okay? So you can just, uh, you can omit it. And as you can see right now, we have a perfect, beautiful uh, macro that we can use to make our lives much much easier all right lovely now uh, the next thing about error handling to make our lives easier is the gfw error callback so instead of checking for gfw errors every time we can set a gfw error callback and that will basically do the task so let's create it all right so in fact it's called gfw set error callback there we go. And if I actually hold control and click on it on my IDE, it, it tells me the, it, it takes me into the declaration, which is lovely. And as you can see, it takes a callback, which is called GFW error fun. It's a type diff of a function pointer, basically. And here, this is the signature. This is the signature. So it, it needs this parameters. It needs to be this parameters and it needs to return void. Right, so that's why I'm gonna actually create that way. So void GFW error callback. Uh, okay, and then I'm just gonna paste in the signature and there we go. Now, I'm just gonna panic if like, if that error callback have been executed by GFW, I'm just gonna use panic. I'm gonna actually pass error code. And what's lovely is that in Vulkan, VK success is equal to zero. And in GFW, no error also equals to zero. So uh, I can just go ahead and just give it error code directly because in fact, zero doesn't represent an error at all in GFW and in Vulkan and in most other libraries. So that is really lovely. That is really lovely. So if this is zero, this will just basically not uh, execute anyway. But yeah, anyway. Uh, right, cause this, uh, I'm gonna pass in the description basically. I'm gonna pass in the description. And let's just say this is coming from GFW. Okay, GFW and then S. And by the way, it's recommended that you never pass in a, a const, like a string directly into the format. Uh, always have the string something like this, right? For example, if you have only if you only want one string, just say S, format S, and then add this. Why? Because too simply, uh, description could contain some invalid characters for the format, and you're gonna happen with uh, some problem, or even some security problem. So always make sure that the first parameter is the format. You're gonna save a lot of pain, okay? So GFW set error callback, and then we're just gonna set our error callback now, nice. And also there's another beautiful feature for error handling, which is uh, called at, at exit callback, okay? So I'm just gonna say hmm, at exit. But the thing is this function to, to be able to use this function, we need something called uh, another uh, standard library. Uh, it's called, let's see, hmm, scdlib, there we go, scdlib. And 
and this will actually give you the two macros which is is exit success and exit failure uh, so it's more readable that's the first thing and second thing we we got the function exit if you want to use it and third thing we can also we also have at exit function which if we control it okay it takes in a, a function a function pointer which returns void and it takes a void okay so let's create that error callback or yeah so, uh, not error callback but exit callback okay so void uh, exit callback and it takes nothing and it takes void that's basically it and now i can just pass in the exit callback to here make sure to add the semicolon there and there you go now by the way when you set at exit exit callback whenever you exit the program somehow then it just goes ahead and calls exit callback which is lovely and even when you return from the main function it will actually go ahead and call exit callback automatically which is just awesome okay uh, now we're just going to make sure to terminate and why I'm giving terminate uh, such such care? Because in fact, yes, you don't have to to destroy the stuff that you make and that you're gonna destroy at the end of the program anyways. Because in fact, the OS will go ahead and do that for you automatically. But GFW terminate, for example, is really important to call before you exit the program. Too simply because GFW is a window library, and it can go ahead, depending on the platform, it can go ahead and change some system settings. And if you don't terminate it properly, yes, it will deallocate memory and simple stuff like that but for example if the gfw changes some settings some system settings or change some files or whatever and stuff like that it won't actually go ahead and undo those operations so just make sure to at least gfw for now uh, make sure that's the, the case all right now we're done with the basic error handling feature stuff okay lovely stuff Next up, we're gonna start by creating, uh, I think, a window, right? Now, before creating a window, we need, uh, I'm gonna make, instead of creating like a bunch of global variables and just that are everywhere, you know, it's gonna be much better if we create just a struct which hold all those variables, all right? So let's go ahead, type def, uh, struct state, okay? Uh, in fact, I'm gonna call then I'm gonna put the name here. So type dev struct state. There you go. And now here we're gonna have the glfw window. Hmm. Uh, glfw window. There we go. It's gonna be a pointer, of course. Window. And it's better. It's a good practice to put the pointer uh, symbol uh, with the with the variable name, not the actual type. Because in fact, you may have, like let's say something else, for example, hello, right? Some other variable, hello, for example, you know? And this this pointer thing won't actually, hello will be just a GFW window, but it won't be a pointer to GFW window. If you want to make a pointer, you have to do this. That's why it's a good thing to always make sure that you have the, uh, the asterisk with the name, okay? Uh, so you don't fall in such stupid, <laughs> uh, like, traps, but yeah, anyway, most people actually use it the other way, but yeah, this is the much better way, I guess. So anyway, now, in fact, since we're using a state to hold all our variables, what we can do right now, we can easily split the program into functions, and each, each function uh, mutates that state depending on what it needs to do okay now here in my in my thing here for example here's uh, stuff like this I can just say uh, set up uh, error handling I guess let's call it a function set up error handling okay void set up error handling okay there we go that's the first thing that we want to do. Second thing we're gonna we're gonna create a window. Okay. And in fact to create a window we have to pass our state. Okay, but we didn't create a state yet. So let's do it. Let's go ahead and create it. So state 
state there we go and we're going to initialize that state because if you don't initialize it like this then the state uh, struct will contain garbage values but if you do it like this it will go ahead and initialize all the values to zero so if there's any value that i need to set to zero i just can ignore it completely so that is lovely all right so nice stuff now i have my state and i can just give it to all the functions i can give a reference to all the functions so let's go ahead and do that so void create window uh, void create window and it takes in a i believe a state yeah state pointer okay state there we go awesome stuff let's create window and now I can just create the other functions and I can just lay out my, my thing. And in fact, instead of doing it this way, I can just call all of these guys uh, init, you know. The, you have the initialization, you have the loop, and you have the cleanup or the initialization. Okay. All of these guys and all of them needs the, the access to state. Of course, we're going to just give it a reference to state though. By the way, uh, Let's actually create a, hmm. Okay, let's create an init real quick because I have that on my clipboard. Void init, which is gonna take state. State. And there we go, you just set up the error handling and you, you're you passing the state to create a window. Now, all right, lovely. And in fact, before creating a window, you have to also maybe initialize GFW, so void. Uh, you don't really need to anyway. Fine, you can you can do that just in here. So here, just gonna say GFW in it. But yeah, whatever. <coughs> Next up, we're gonna have a loop, basically void loop, which also gonna take a state. By the way, I don't need to do this like this, but it's just much better to, to, to make the code readable and to really show the steps that it takes to create a thing, right? And whenever you need the details, you just go ahead, control, and there you go, you get to that function. You want to know how we set up error handling, control, and there we go, That this is how you set up the error handling. <laughs> really lovely stuff, isn't it? So yeah, uh, loop, of course, make sure to always pass in a, a reference to the state, a reference to the state, there we go. Uh, void cleanup state and I hate uh, classes because it just there's just a lot of details that you have to look out for it can easily uh, make a really bad uh, structured program uh, that's why I love you know the the functional way like not functional but imperative I think it's called anyway <laughs> basically just using functions but yeah and structs so really awesome stuff anyway so after loop uh, uh, loop cleanup so this is basically what we do we initialize we loop then we clean up all right amazing so let's actually make this create window function so we initialize gfw then we have to set some uh, window hints window hints gfw let's say client api we're gonna select no api because since we're working with Vulkan, we have to specify GFW no API. If we're working, for example, with OpenGL, then we have to say GFW, I think, OpenGL, something like that. Because in fact, GFW goes ahead, if you're, for example, using uh, OpenGL, it goes ahead and set up the context for you, okay? But in this case, we don't need any context because pretty much we're gonna be creating everything ourselves. That's why we're saying GFW no API. So GFW doesn't need to do any crazy setup for our window. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, so yeah, so now let's actually give it some more hints. Uh, we're gonna have GFW resizable, okay? And here you can still tell it GFW true or GFW it's false like this. But instead of hard coding values uh, like this, I'm just gonna go ahead and and put it into the struct, okay? So let's go ahead and do that. So uh, window. I'm gonna need the window title first of all char window title so I can easily basically uh, change those variables uh, integer width whenever I want so integer width and height 
and let's make sure the asterisks are with the variable name there we go lovely now integer width and height and then i need the resizable and instead of using int you can use int but i'm just going to use bool because it's much more readable and to use bool you have to include uh, by the way, bool is basically a boolean value, which is basically true or false. So I, I need to use that in C, I have to say std bool, because in fact, there is no boolean values like primitives in, in C for true and false. If you want true, you just say one or anything other than zero. And then if you want false, you just say zero. Uh, but yeah, it's just more readable to say boolean. And that's why you need this if you want to use such a feature. All right. So anyway. Uh, boolean resize but at the end of the day bool is just you know it's just kind of like an integer but anyway resizable all right lovely now i can just say state dot resizable but in fact since i'm gonna have a lot of uh, variables right there i'm just gonna have i'm gonna tell it window resizable and pretty much the same thing for the other guys uh in fact i already done it for window title all right, that's lovely. And then you basically create the window. And the good news is that I don't have to check for any errors since I already set up the error handling callback for GFW, which is lovely. <laughs> State, let's pass in the width. Oh my God, let's pass in the, the window width. There we go. Let's pass in the height. There we go. Let's pass in the title, the window title. And let monitor, we're just gonna say null. If you want full screen, you have to set it to a monitor. For example, if you say get primary monitor. Uh, oh my God, GFW get primary monitor. If you say this, then it's gonna make the window full screen. Um, and I mean, you can do it if you want to, but I'm not gonna do it, I think. I mean, you can add, you can add the, that, so bool window full screen although we're not gonna actually handle this stuff in Vulkan I I guess I don't know but anyway window full screen let's just do it anyways just for the sake of the tutorial if you want to do it uh, but I recommend not to do it like not to do it to make it a full screen I'm not really sure how full screen works uh, with Vulkan uh, but yeah uh, window full screen so state window full screen there we go now if that's the case in fact let's create a gfw monitor here monitor and in fact let's also store the monitor because why not uh -huh. uh, G window monitor right so gfw window window monitor and of course it's going to be a pointer all right, lovely. So if state window full screen, they're just gonna say state dot uh, window monitor. There. By the way, it's not using dot, it's using this guy instead of dot because in fact state is a pointer. And to access the properties of a struct pointer, you have to use this, this syntax instead of point, okay? Instead of a dot. So yeah, that's basically what it is. Uh, and this, by the way, is just uh, it's just sugar syntax for doing this, okay? For dereferencing the struct, then saying dot, I believe. If I'm, yeah, exactly. So this, instead of doing this, you just say this. All right, so that's basically it. Uh, state window, so basically it just dereferences first the struct, then it sets the value or gets the value or whatever. So state window monitor is equal to glfw get primary monitor. I'm just gonna use the primary monitor, but in fact, using glfw, you can just go ahead and pick up which monitor you want and stuff like that. I'm not gonna go that deep. So yeah, yeah pointer compatible, sorry. Oh. Uh, and not window <laughs> monitor okay there we go window monitor lovely and that's pretty much so basically if window full screen then set it to gfw primary monitor otherwise it's just going to be initialized as null anyway uh if you're using this guy right here this initializer all right now if we actually run this we're going to get an error and you're going to see why hopefully Let's see, not expected construct arguments. To, 
Oh, interesting. So, in fact, I forgot about something, which is here. It should be a const char uh, window title. Okay. Uh, what's the problem, though? Expected expression, empty statement. Uh, we don't need the semicolon here. Parameter is never used. I don't care. I don't care. Expected expression. Oh, yeah. I forgot. State window monitor. There we go. And then, uh, and then the share. For share, I'm just gonna say null. It just somehow to share to like two monitors. I don't know how that works exactly, but just leave it as null. Doesn't matter. Incompatible pointer times passing const char to parameter. Oh, oh my god. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Instead of this, it's actually just one pointer really. Yeah. There we go. So basically, a string, a literal string, is just const char pointer. And there you go. That's it, pretty much. GW create. Now let's see actually what's gonna happen. I know there's gonna have an error. Let's go. GW create window assertion title not equal null field. So basically, what this tells us that we we have passed to title a null. And why that's the case? Uh, because too simply we didn't set the window title. We didn't initialize those. And in fact, we need to initialize them here. Uh, so because we don't want them to be zero or null. So that's why. So you say dot window title here is equal to let's say code attack and then let's say window width equal to 720 HD window height let's say equal to 480 you can choose whatever dimensions whatever title uh, that doesn't matter window resize well for now we're just gonna go with false later on we may uh, because in fact for Vulkan you have to do some special stuff to support a resizable window. That's why for now we're just going to leave it as false. And uh, next up is basically window full screen. All right. So window full screen. For now it's just going to be false. And then is there anything else that I have to set for the window? Not really. I don't care about the monitor. So. Oh, interesting thing. Like. Uh, all right, fine, fine, fine. Window full screen. If state window full screen, then do this. All right, fine, lovely. So that's pretty much all the the stuff that I want to initialize. The other stuff I don't care. They can just stay as null. And now if we actually do this, boom, it works. Probably it makes a window, but in fact we're not uh, stopping the program. It just creates a window and it just immediately exits that's why and here since we're creating a window whenever you create something make sure to come to cleanup and say gfw uh, destroy window and here we're gonna pass in our window I think and of course this window is uh, stored inside of our state all right state window and there you go and just to not leave any dangling pointers we're just gonna we can just say state window is equal to null and there you go just so you don't leave a dangling pointer uh, but you don't need to do this really but yeah all right so next up what we should do for the loop I'm gonna go ahead and create a application loop so we don't exit immediately we actually stay until the user close the window or close the application so while not GFW window should close and then here we're just gonna pass our window state window there you go so while not the window want to close then we're just gonna pull events we're gonna process the window events because if we don't process the window events uh, then it won't handle any window events basically too simply so here we have some problem state window so for some reason state window is null and that's understandable because GFW create window we don't set it to anything but we have to actually set it to the window so GL not GFW state window equal to GFW create window now if you do this there you go as you can see we have a window and we can move it around and we can close it and it will close the program lovely if you don't if you didn't have this pull events which basically process the events if you do this well you cannot close the window normally uh, so yeah do basically GLFW pull events 
awesome. There is also another one which is GFW wait event, wait events, and this is used for uh, not games, but for let's say GYs. I mean, GY applications, which basically are only process a new frame if there is you know like someone interacting with the window somehow like for example moving the cursor or there is a key or something but since we want to to keep on infinitely processing new frames we're just going to use gfw pull events and, if, and usually games use this pull events or at least uh, in fact probably not just usually but mostly so yeah anyway so now we're good with the window. Uh, lovely stuff. It's all really beautiful stuff. I love that. I just love that. All right. So what we need to do now? Mm -hmm. mm -mm 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 -mm. Clean up. Stay. And in fact, uh, but no, no, no need. All right, fine. So next up, we can actually initialize Vulcan. So after creating the window, we can init uh, or create instance, basically create instance, let's pass our state. There we go. And now let's create a new function called create instance, void create instance, state, uh -huh, state, there you go. Nice. So here we can create our instance. Now let's try it out. So vk create instance and let's see what parameter it needs. So it needs to create a VK instance create info. It needs allocation callbacks, basically the allocator. Okay. So basically create instance actu actually needs to allocate some memory. So you have to, to set up an allocator or you can just pass null, which means you're just going to tell Vulkan to use its default, its own implementation of a uh, allocator. So yeah. Um, and usually, uh, you know, like the default allocator is so good anyways. Uh, but yeah. Anyway, vk instance p instance. All right, lovely. So first of all, let's uh, let's pass in the instance create info, and let's just say call it create info though. Create info. And next up, we're gonna have hmm, the allocator. Yeah, allocator. So for allocator, we're not gonna uh, of like <laughs> again, we're not gonna. What's the word? Hard code it as the other tutorials do. I'm just gonna use the state variable because why not? State allocator, there you go. And then uh, here you should tell uh, Vulcan where to put your newly created instance. I'm gonna call, I'm gonna tell it to put it inside of uh, the state dot instance. All right. And by the way, we're using a reference if you notice here, because in fact, this this guy just gives the address of in memory. Okay, so you basically give it the address where in memory where to put that instance, <laughs> and this is basically it. And of course, we still don't have here, still don't have a vacant instance. So let's go ahead and do it. Um, is it like this? Yep, it is instance, and there you go. And also, I need an allocator. So uh, before even create an instance, let's say vk allocations callback uh, allocator. There you go. Uh, and of course, this is going to be pointer because in fact, I'm uh, I'm not like I don't. I can just use no allocator. That's why I have pointer. And in fact, since I'm using the initializer, it will automatically goes ahead and it set this allocator to null. Uh, if I didn't specify it, okay, so that is lovely. That is awesome. Amazing Amazing now for the create info we have to create it right now. I believe yes, make sure to use this guy right here and There you go. Now let's create the create info. So vk instance create info uh, Instance create info and now let's see how that works. Of course, equal to, and there we go. Now this is the, all the parameters that you can you can use make use of, uh, but we really always need to 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 set this VK structure type. And the thing is, Vulkan when you create like when we call a Vulkan function, 
uh, like it's usually passed to the driver as a void pointer without any size, without anything, right? And so that's why you need this VK structure type to so the driver knows what kind of uh, type it is. Because in fact, we, we're the only ones that knows the type, but the driver probably doesn't know. And it can know by actually checking the first, uh, you know, the first property of that struct okay that's why we always have to have this vk structure type enum at the start of every vulcan struct okay so let's actually do that dot s type equal to uh, vk structure type mm, i i usually like to say just instance create info and then it just will fill fill out for me stuff up let's just create info there we go vk structure type instance create info there you go now this is always needed to set this s type thing the other ones for example next i don't care since it will be set automatically for me as null because i'm using the initializer okay all right for the application info this is needed and i need it to set the api version uh, so let's actually make that in fact let's go to here okay so application info again it have a s type which is of course obligatory to add p next i'm gonna send it to null uh, initializer will set it to null application name same thing i don't care it's like application name engine name engine version uh, uh, application version like this whole thing right here it's only useful if you have let's say a uh, you know a popular application and then the graphics uh the driver like let's say nvidia wants to optimize the dr its driver for your own game then it will it can detect your game from this application name application version engine name engine version like for example if if your game is using let's say uh, unreal engine 4 then it can for example maybe set the engine name to unreal engine 4 and then the driver will know that's a thing and so what's gonna happen is that it will actually uh, optimize its driver for your own engine but that's only happen if you're if you're a big company right a big application and stuff so we don't really care about these so we're just gonna leave them as null all uh, right so we just we're just uh, individual <laughs> developers we don't care and especially as a tutorial really don't care you don't care uh, you can set them you can set them it doesn't matter but yeah i'm just not gonna set them anyway just gonna leave them as i don't know what's gonna happen in the the connection but i don't need it so yeah anyway so yeah lovely so let's actually create a vk uh application info there we go application info is equal to that make sure to add the semicolons and of course again uh, you have to add the s type equal to vk structure uh, type well let's just say application info there we go all right and next up i'm only interested into the api version that's the only thing that is interesting and here you can say vk api version one zero one 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 two one three and like until the creation of this video uh, until today the only version that i have available is one three all right uh, so yeah you can just use one zero if you want to but in fact i'm just gonna say state dot api so i can change it at any time i want basically uh, let's see API version uh -huh. API version okay so for the API version let's see how I'm gonna do it uh, so API versions are just uh, 30 you and in signed integers 32 bits 32 bits right so it just API version all right lovely so whatever we set the API version for it will just apply to it and here I can set it so the API version and I love this way because in by using this way I can easily change the variables that could easily change without any problem right here I can just say vk so like I have all the variables in one place which is really awesome and I can use whatever version I want okay so yeah lovely all right 
I'm gonna be using one three for now. Next up, what we have, what we have, what we have. Mm -hmm. Clore it here. Create info. In fact, we don't need this uh, instance. We'll just say create info and then application info. Why not? Uh, create info. Okay, by the way, you need to pass in the reference here. And that's pretty much it. Now here, let's say dot p application info is equal to application info. And by the way, whenever you see this, whenever it starts with the p knows that it's basically a pointer and that's why i have to do this if it's dot p p something for example here enable extension names that means you need a reference like two pointers okay for example this guy okay application info something like this so yeah but yeah anyway or sometimes it's a struct to a pointer but anyway P application. So that's pretty much all I really want, all I'm interested in, because there is uh, other crazy stuff. There is enabled extension names, there's extensions. This is actually useful, yeah. This is used. Layers are for debugging, but in my case, instead of you instead of doing layers by myself, I'm just gonna use the application that is inside of the uh, uh what it's called, inside of the uh the Vulkan SDK, which is called VK, uh, I actually don't remember. Yeah, there we go. VK config, there we go. I think, there, there we go. You get this and then you can just select validation and it will do that for you. You can even select uh, break, so it will actually break when there is a problem uh, with your application. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Message severity, you can ch change the message severity that you want. You can limit duplicated messages, etc. There's the validation area. There's a lot of crazy beautiful stuff that you can use here instead of doing it yourself manually. Uh, so that is really lovely. Uh, all right. I, I don't care about info. I only care about warning, performance, and error. Okay, so yeah, because info it just gives you some garbage right there, which I'm not interested into. Uh, but yeah. Anyways, so now I'm interested into enable extensions count and enable layer names. Why? Too simply because I want to create a window. And in fact, Vulkan is uh, is uh, platform agnostic. You know, it's cross platform. It doesn't really care about the platform you are in, and you don't. It doesn't care about if you're using a window or not. You can just use it for offline render, or you can just use it to get information about the GPU, for example. Um, that's why, if you want to use a window, then you have to add some extensions that are required to to interface with that window or to use that window. Okay. Uh, with the Vulkan and that's why I have to add some extensions but in fact it depends on which platform you are you're gonna add some different extensions for example if you're on window windows you're gonna add the windows or win32 uh, windows extension okay if you are let's say on x11 you may want to add x11 window if you're using xcb blah 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 you know all that crazy stuff but we're using a library called GLW, which is already called cross-platform windowing, windowing library. So we can use that to actually give us the extensions that we need for our window to actually use Vulkan without any problem. And that's what we're going to do right here. <laughs> so yeah, uh, that's why I'm actually going to go ahead and going to come here. Um, or in fact, I'm not going to come here, right? Let's just, I think, let's just do it here. Okay. So uh vk instance create info right hmm not no 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 <laughs> we're gonna use a gfw thing so gfw extensions so get required ex so there is a there is a function called gfw get required extens instance extensions when you use gfw with vulcan uh, and then you just give it a first of all it gives you a const char pointer pointer and we know that const char pointer is basically a literal string okay but then when you add another pointer, you get an array of strings, okay? And then afterwards, it actually gives you how much strings are there in that array uh, by giving it a reference. So that's what we're going to do here. So instance, or let's just say extensions count, which should be UN32T. You're going to notice that when you're using Vulkan, it's usually using UN32T uh, for its stuff. But anyway, um, 
Usually if you're working with arrays though, in, in pure C, you should use size T. But since we're working with Volkner, you have to use UN32T, okay? So yeah, UN32T, extensions count. Let's go, extensions count. I'm gonna add the pointer uh, to it. There we go. And in fact, this also returns the extensions. So here I'm just gonna say const char uh, pointer pointer. And there we go. Uh, but in fact, this is going to be the extensions. I'm going to call it extensions. And just to be clear, you can say required extensions, required extensions count. Okay, lovely. Uh, right. Now I can actually add that required extensions. So here I'm just going to say dot p or like dot enabled extensions count is equal to required extensions count, and then dot p pp enabled extension names you can say required extensions just like that pretty simple stuff isn't it really lovely um here let's make sure to and by the way adding a re we're putting a reference if you know it's here because in fact we're telling gfw where to put we're not telling it how much required extensions are, are there because we don't know how much we're, we're waiting for gfw to tell us that information that's why we're giving it instead of required extensions count we're giving it a reference to the to where in memory we want that count to be in and then it will gfw will go ahead and it will go that to that address in memory and we'll put the count of the extensions right there in that address that we tell told it and that's basically what happens here. And in fact, here it's given a reference to the first string in an array. And that's why we have const char blah, 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 blah. Anyway. <laughs> All right. So really awesome stuff. Now we're actually uh, done with the create instance, I believe. All right. Lovely stuff. So in fact, at this point, we're all good. But the thing is, I forgot one thing, which is whenever you use a Vulkan uh, thing, a Vulkan function, or whatever, you have to use panic, okay? So if there's any error, it will error, basically. <laughs> panic, and then you can tell it uh, uh, why it panicked. For example, here, uh, couldn't create instance. Couldn't create instance. And there we go. Uh, that's pretty much it. Now, if there's any error, it's going to tell us. That is really amazing. So as you can see, there's no error because panic didn't actually trigger it. So yeah, lovely, 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 lovely. And of course, let's make sure to actually go ahead and uh, destroy our our instance. So vk destroy instance. Then we're gonna say state instance. That's pretty much how you create the two few arguments function called expected to have one. Uh, oh yeah, because you also need the allocator, I believe. Not self. Oh my god, state state uh, allocator. Let's go. And there we go. So whenever you destroy a uh, an instance you need the allocator and where that instance is is inside of as you can see so now notice when we wanted to create the instance we actually give the address of the instance okay so uh, Vulkan can go ahead to that to that uh, you know to that memory address and put the instance for us right there but here notice that instead of using the reference we're actually passing state instance we're passing the instance because we need to know the value itself not the reference to it all right awesome stuff awesome stuff uh, that's pretty much it for use for creating an instance next up we have to select a physical device I believe before we select physical device let's add some beautiful uh, information though so let's just say instead of error handle before we even create a window let's just say log uh, log uh, maybe info okay i'm gonna have a void log info log info uh, this is just nice to have but you don't really need it you know um so we're gonna have a vacay 
or actually you are going to have uint 32t for the instance version instance api version okay i'm just going to say uh let's see by the way let's use it the uh, let's be consistent here <laughs> oh my god the required extension scout let's go and let's make sure to do it this way this way there we go of course i'm using just control c control v sometimes i'll control x to cut but yeah instance api version and here i can actually call vk enumerate instance version this is in my opinion this is the like the the simplest function in vulkan it just you give it the uh where to put the api version and then you just give it an address to it and then it will just go ahead and do that and give you the uh, the the version and then i can just print f all crazy stuff okay i can print it basically and how to print it well i'm going to say vulcan api then we're going to have i point i point i point i basically four integers uh, in that format and then basically i'm going to say vk api like well uh the first one is called variant so vk api version variant these these are basically macros that will actually goes ahead and and takes a uint 32t which is just a simple value it will extract variants from it because in fact inside of this uint 32t there is four values stored there okay inside those bits and then for example this macro as you can see it's doing some crazy shifting stuff and some uh, bit manipulation stuff to actually extract that information from those bits uh, okay so that's why you have to use a macro uh, to actually get the individual uh, version stuff all right and that's why in fact we also say when we want to pass in an api version we want to create one we use also this uh, another macro which is basically goes ahead and takes these four values uh, okay and turns them into uh, one value by doing some other bit manipulation stuff <laughs> which is really lovely uh, but anyway vk api version major and then we have vk api version uh, major and again we're going to pass in the instance api version and at this point i'm just going to copy this guy and i'm going to paste it all right lovely in fact, instead of doing it this way, hmm, maybe I can just say here variant, okay? So uint 32t variant is equal to this. Of course, API version. Say API version variant. Okay. All right, awesome. No, in fact, we don't need this. Let's actually just remove this craziness. All right, let's actually copy, paste, paste, paste. Now, instead of variant, we're going to use major, uh, minor, and we can use patch. Okay, and then here, the same thing. I'm just going to say major, minor, and patch. just like that and now we can pass it in uh, we have the variant we have the major we have the minor and finally we have the patch and with that yeah you get that beautiful word but make sure to add a new line there and by the way i'm also going to do the same thing with my with my error handling or error macro i'm just going to make sure there's a new line at the end uh so yeah because in fact if you don't add that new line it won't flush uh the S standard like the stream okay and if you don't flush the stream it won't show up until the stream is flushed uh, which is not the best thing ever but yeah and as you can see right now it directly goes ahead and and by the way, I don't need a new ver actually I do need it, yeah. Because in fact, let's let's see. If you don't include that version, it won't tell you because it didn't flush the stream yet. Until you close the application, then it flushes the stream. 
as you know and in fact it flushes the stream because this is there is this uh, it's printing this guy which holds a new line uh, but if you actually make sure to include the new lines so it actually goes ahead and flushes the stream and it shows you up the the needed stuff directly without any problem and there you go we have a cool window and if you want to edit something like let's say uh, resizable it's really simple just like that and there you go boom you don't have to look through the functions to change that value um, so yeah that is really awesome stuff and as you can see it tells me the API version that is supported by my instance currently as you can see Vulkan API and it's just nice to know the versions okay which is nice and in fact you can pass this uh, this uh, instance version that we enumerated into into basically into the API version and then it basically what's going to happen is that when you create the instance it will it will uh, uh, initialize it with the, the latest version that is supported which could be also a case but in my case I'm just hard coding the value and VK API version 1.3 is just a macro for VK make API version 0.1.3.0 and by the way, look at this. Patch version should always be set to zero, which is interesting. And then we have this guy uh, set to zero which, zero, which is the variant. The variant, uh, so the variant is basically, like for example, in OpenGL, you have different OpenGL versions, uh, like variants, I mean. You have Open G normal OpenGL, right? And you also have OpenGL ES. I think it's for embedded devices and phones, maybe. You have, uh, I don't know, there's a lot of crazy variants of OpenGL. In in the case of Vulkan, there's only one variant until the making of this video. That's why we just say zero always to, to that. And for the patch, basically, it's just corrections. You can use whatever patch, but it's just better to use zero. And here, the major and the minor, these are the important ones, okay? These that you should look out for, okay? So after every major version, what happens is that there is breaking changes. So your application, if you programmed your application for the version one, you may not be able to run it on version two. But if it, if it just the minor, the minor just adds new features, okay? Uh, that doesn't break the existing features. Uh, so your application won't be broke, but it won't be using some new features that are just added. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Uh, it's better to use uh, if you want uh, maximum compatibility, use one zero. In my case, I'm just going to use one one three. And in fact, that's pretty much it for the. Uh... Oh, actually, I also want another login, another info, which is the GFW version. It could also be really useful. And it's really simple for GFW. Just say print f. Here we're just going to say s, gfw, and an s. And here we're going to pass in the string, which is gfw get version string. And there you go. And make sure, of course, to add a new line. And that's pretty much it. Now, as you can see, we have the Vulkan API, and then you have gfw. This is the version. I think this is the major, the minor, and the patch, maybe. And then, as you can see, I'm using the x11. GLX, EGL, OS Mesa, Clock Get Time, EV Dev, Shared. This is the stuff that is used by, by GFW for my particular system. Okay, that's, that's pretty much it. Pretty much it, pretty much By the way, I have, uh, I'm using, uh, what it's called? Uh, Manjaro Arch Linux, all right? So that's pretty much it. Now that was basically the instance and the window creation. Uh, it's really awesome stuff what we have done today. I really love it. So for now, I'm just going to make sure to to create a git repo for this. And for that, I'm just going to, by the way, close the vk config for now. I don't need it anymore for, for now until uh, later on when I'm going to use it uh, for validation. Of course, as I said, uh, if you want validation layers, you just use vk config. Or you can even, even use some... Uh, you just put a text file with a particular name in the directory if you're executable and just goes ahead and will it can enable or disable stuff up but yeah anyways for now though i'm just gonna say git init so i can create a new git repo there we go as you can see and now i'm just gonna say git add um i'm gonna add src and cmake lists 
okay and then I'm just gonna commit get commit dash m and I'm gonna give it a message here basically instance and window creation all right that's pretty much it get commit and there you go I added the uh, I added some stuff as you can see. There's two files changed and one of 22 insertions. And that's pretty much it for now. I can just even say git push, but I didn't make, a, I didn't create the repo yet. So yeah, that was it for this video, I believe. I believe it. So I'm just gonna pause the stream for a while just to see if there's any corrections to be made. Otherwise, we're just gonna quit. Uh, uh, just gonna stop the stream. So yeah. We'll just see. All right, there's nothing wrong. Uh, hopefully, I didn't notice anything wrong with my code. I just have one warning here, which is an empty statement. Basically, it's telling me that I don't need a semicolon there. And in fact, we're pretty much done. Let me just make sure to uh, commit. In fact, I can just use my here. I think I can just add that. I'm gonna amend because I want to just amend it with the last uh, comment. So I'll just say amend comment and there we go. Ask again. That's pretty much, that's pretty much it really. So yeah, uh, lovely. So, and goodbye everyone.